What is going on guys? Welcome to your 14th HTML5 tutorial and in this tutorial, now that we understand the traditional box model, in other words, how to lay out websites nowadays, I want to tell you guys about the flexible box model. Now the flexible box model is the future of web design, I'm telling you guys. And I'm not just saying that like, oh look at the iPhone, it's the future of cell phones. No, this is literally the future of web design. This technology isn't even out yet. Browsers are still implementing this and it's probably going to be official in about a year or two. So once it becomes official, then you guys are going to be at the front of the pack for web designers and wait till you guys see it. It makes you have easily flexible websites and epic amazing layouts. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. It's really easy to uh, see visually. In you know, instead of me trying to explain what everything is, I'll just go ahead and show you guys. So what I did is I went and cleared out everything in our main CSS and the only thing I have left in our main template is I left all of those IDs just because, you know, we can need, use them to reference our div tag still and I didn't want to write them over and that's basically it. I pretty much left all the IDs and yep, that's it. So basically you can just go ahead and copy this template for my forum and once you copy this you'll be good to go so let me go ahead and there's only one small change that we have to make in bucky.html and that's this we have our body and then basically all of our body is wrapped in this huge div tag called big wrapper now under our navigation bar but above our main section what we want to do is we want to wrap this main section and also the side news in another div tag. So I'm just going to go ahead and write a div tag called div id equals I'm just going to name it new div. So then we can clearly see what information is new in this tutorial aside from the last tutorial. So that's the div tag and we need to close it. We're going to add our closing tag right below this last aside. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw that right there and now you can see we got an opening and closing div tag called new div and again I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this and throw it on my forum so if you guys you know are wondering okay where am I supposed to copy that just go ahead and grab it from my forum or look on my forum and make sure you got it in the same places that I do so anyways now that we that got that taken care of we can hop over and make sure you save that hop over to main CSS now let's go ahead and just preview this in Chrome right here to make sure you guys are on the same page as I am Right now we just got a plain old Jane old boring stupid website. Time to spice things up a bit. So in our main CSS the first thing we want to do is just some simple housekeeping stuff. For the overall website we just want to reset the margins to 0 pixels and also reset the padding of everything to 0 pixels as well. Now that we got that taken care of, let's just go ahead and fix our headers just so they look a tidbit pretty. So font, and I'm just going to save this as bold, 20 pixels, Tahoma. You got to love Tahoma. Can't go wrong with Tahoma. And let me just go ahead and copy this real quick. And for heading 2, I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to change this to 14 pixels, just like that. And might as well save. Save often. Now if I can remember my mnemonic device, header, section, footer, uh, let's see, aside, nav, I think it is, article, wow I messed up article again, and H group. Now let me see if I got that right. I think I said Harry, Sally, Freddy, and Ned ate hens. I think that was it. I knew that would come in handy sooner or later. So now what I want to do here is display all of these as a block, which pretty much means by default, all of these things are going to be positioned one under each other. And we need to specify that because basically for browsers that don't recognize these elements yet, and just for compatibility across all browsers. So I talked about that last time. So let's go ahead and move right onto the body. Now the body, what we need to do is we need to change a couple things. The very first thing we need to do is specify the width. Now the width of the body needs to be 
percent and you're saying Bucky by default isn't it hundred percent well yes on more most browsers but you need to specify the size in order to use this flexible box styling of the website so again anytime you're using this flex box style make sure that you specify that 100% if you don't you're gonna run into a whole bunch of problems and that's because whenever we make these boxes that are flexible your browser needs to calculate the size of the boxes in order to know how much to change it how, no, how much to shrink it or grow it so it needs to know specifically the size of the overall body so we won't get into all that basically the only thing you have to remember is make sure your width is 100 and now we get into a little confusing stuff so we need to alter the display now we basically need to tell this body okay you are a parent box and basically we're saying okay we're gonna be putting flexible boxes inside you so in order to specify this this is where things get a little bit weird type webkit or excuse me minus webkit minus box and you're like okay slow down I have never seen that before in my life well remember when I said that this is new technology and it isn't even out yet and some browsers are still implementing this technology well it's true and that's why you need to use this webkit this webkit I know that the webkit is implemented in Google Chrome and I wanna say it's implemented in Safari as well so this pretty much means okay Google Chrome we're gonna be using a special webkit now and until they implement it and make it a standard we're gonna need to use these special kits so I, I know it's kind of weird right now but basically make sure you're using Google Chrome or else this tutorial is not gonna work and also make sure that you use this webkit which pretty much means okay we want to use the tools that Google Chrome is going to recognize so if you don't have Google Chrome downloaded go download it by the way it's the best browser anyway so if you aren't using it then you guys want to use it anyways so basically what we're doing with this display is saying okay body you're gonna be holding a bunch of flexible boxes in it now another thing that we want to use from the webkit is a property called webkit box pack now webkit box pack is basically saying okay how do we want the boxes inside this to be packed together and we pretty much want to just say center which pretty much means center align the boxes now the property more specifically since I might as well tell you guys in details say you have a website that's a thousand pixels wide however you only have two boxes in there that may be 300 pixels wide each so you have a bunch of space left over so what you're saying is okay when the website is bigger than the contents inside just go ahead and center those contents so essentially what we're doing is we're centering the one child that this body has and since this body has one div it's gonna center the website so basically this line right here is a weird way of centering the website in other words centering the children which basically like I said centers the website so now that we got all that confusing stuff taken care of we got a lot of other stuff to tackle but trust me guys it is definitely worth it and um you definitely don't want to miss these next two or three tutorials because it's going to change your whole view of web development and it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So anyways, for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.